Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. In this brief video, we will look at hair dye allergy. The most common ingredient of hair dye that causes allergy is called PPD, paraphenylindiamin. Let's look at the clinical features of PPD allergy, how to treat and prevent it, and most importantly, what hair dye is to use when we develop an allergy to it. PPT is an aromatic amine that penetrates the skin easily and therefore leads to allergic contact sensitivity. It affects about 1-2% to of those who use it and is increasing in incidence. This is because younger people are using hair dyes and children who apply henna tattoos also get sensitized to this chemical. There is probably a genetic predisposition as well, but other risk factors are atopic eczema, using a darker shade of hair dye, or for work is that of a hairdresser. The condition is more common in those with dark skin than in white skin as they are more likely to use darker dyes which contain more PPD. How quickly we develop the allergy is time and dose dependent. If we take a lot of time to apply the dye, we will be more prone to the allergy. How does hair dye allergy manifest in the skin? The most important point to remember is that we are much more likely to develop an itchy rash on the face, particularly on the eyelids and in the ears and nape of neck than on the scalp itself. This is because the scalp skin is quite thick, whilst that around the eyes and the ears is much thinner. Also, when we use the dye on the hair, it may not reach the base of the scalp, except in the margins, particularly in the forehead, and therefore the rash becomes more evident there. In men who dye their moustache, the rash can appear in the central phase. It sometimes leaves a white mark rather than inflammation of the skin. The best investigation to find the allergy is called patch testing. Another way to diagnose it is called open testing. It is recommended by hair dye manufacturers and should be done about 48 hours prior to hair dye application. They suggest that a small amount of the dye is placed behind the ear and then the skin is observed for any redness or inflammation. The only problem with the open test is that it potentially sensitizes the person to PPD. Treatment is by withdrawing the hair dye and for severely affected patients, the scalp and hair should be washed thoroughly with a soap to remove any excess dye. It would be useful to completely oxidize the PPD by applying hydrogen peroxide or potassium permanganate solutions, but in practice, this is not really tolerated very well. We can also apply cool olive oil or lime to ease the tightness and to soften the crust. Further treatment with potent topical steroids or short courses of oral steroids may be required as well as oral antibiotics if there is any secondary infection. Some of us may not be able to be without hair dyes, so there are techniques to minimize exposure to the dye. In an article published from America, they suggested that firstly it's essential to identify a well-trained and experienced hairdresser with good technique. Self-hair dyeing is problematic because it's almost impossible to avoid getting it into the scalp. A common area of skin affected by dermatitis is the scalp margin. So in preparation, the hairdresser should apply a barrier of petrolatum or moisturizer to minimize the spread of the dye onto the skin. The least amount of dye possible should be applied to the hair, decreasing skin and scalp contact. The technician should not be hurried or rushing to the next client and the dye should remain for the minimum period that is required to obtain the desired result. Next, let's look at the alternatives that we can use if we have a PPD allergy. Herbal hair dye derivatives like henna generally have low allergic potential. However, some of them may have PPD as an additive, particularly ones that give a dark color. Vegetable hair dyes like walnut shell juclone may also be helpful. Selecting a synthetic formulation that is free from PPD may be beneficial. About 60% of patients allergic to PPD are able to tolerate both the newer permanent and semi-permanent hair dyes which are based with paratoluene diamine, PTDS. I've contacted quite a few of my colleagues in the US, India, UK and Australia. So now let's look at the hair dyes that are available in each one of these countries. In India, Dr. Nilesh Goyal mentioned that there are indigo-based dyes available. Brand name is Cuticolor or Vegetal, which can be safely used for those allergic to PPD. However, they last only a short period of time and have to be repeated quite often, maybe every two weeks until the color sets in. After three months, they can use it on a monthly basis. Dr. Maya Vedamurthy suggested Cuticolor and Ultras HD. She also recommended homemade henna, but specifically tells patients 
not to use black header as it contains PPD. My father, Professor Patrick Isudian, also suggested Ultras HD Alembic Hair Hue. The American Academy of Dermatology in their patient information leaflet suggests Elumin by Godwell as it uses acid dyes and Clairol Loving Care as it has dispersed dyes. Other suggestions from our colleagues in the US include Madison Reed, Wella Colliston Perfect with Me Plus, and Herb's PD PPD Free Hair Dye. Note that some of these products contain para toluin diamine, and there is about a 40 to 50% chance that they could cross react with PPD. In the UK, my colleagues Dr. Hill and Dr. Nambi suggested the use of Lush PPD Free Hair Dye range. They do a variety of colors, and all of them have no PPD. In Australia, my friend and dermatologist Mohammed Mateen suggested L'Oreal Magic Retouch as it is a non-permanent PPD-free option to color the visible roots. Mateen also suggested a product from here in the UK called Nature Vital, a plant-based product. There is a list of hair dyes available in various European countries that do not have PPD. With globalization, I suspect we can get most of these hair dyes by ordering them online from home from almost any other country. So in conclusion, PPD is the commonest cause of hair dye contact allergy that can present with a variety of clinical features, including severe facial skin reactions. Avoiding future contact with permanent and semi-permanent hair dyes is a standard preventative measure. A few PPD allergic patients may be able to successfully continue hair dyeing, provided they take all the precautions mentioned before and stick to the recommended hair dyes that are PPD free. I hope you found the list of PPD-free hair dyes useful for you. Thank you for listening and bye.